I'm actually shocked people are not excited about this match. I'm also pleasantly surprised that a big part of my Coco Jumbo family on YouTube don't necessarily agree with the IWC as well. This was not as bad as people make it out to be. When it comes to Jimmy turning on Jay, people seem to forget that WWE actually built to this. What if I tell you, it does make sense. A few weeks ago, Roman Reigns revealed that the only man who didn't want Jay to be the next tribal chief is Jimmy Uso. People seem to forget that. It seemed like Roman Reigns was manipulating Jay as always, but looking back at it now, maybe Jimmy was jealous. Obviously, he chose Jay and we got the whole bloodline civil war and you know Jimmy was the one who actually pulled the trigger but you gotta understand that this story is complicated just because Jimmy was feuding with Roman doesn't mean that Roman was lying Jimmy just didn't turn on his brother because well it's his twin brother I feel like Jimmy was feuding with Roman Reigns for a different reason than Jay Uso. He was jealous of Jay and turning on Roman was a way to separate Jay from Roman. This way they can stay being the Usos and this way Jay will not become the tribal chief. Now obviously Jimmy had his problems with Roman Reigns but that was not the only reason. Jimmy was jealous. He didn't want to see his brother reaching higher heights. And honestly I don't think Jimmy Uso was working with Roman Reigns in this one. He was feuding with Reigns but when he got injured he saw Jay challenge for the undisputed championship and the right to be the next tribal chief. It makes sense when you think about it. The match was for these two prizes and Jimmy stopped Jay from winning. He was jealous. Am I making any sense here? I feel like the story is very simple and just kind of got over so many people's heads. Maybe that's why Jimmy barely hesitated on attacking Roman Reigns. Deep down inside he was jealous of the relationship that Roman Reigns and Jay had so he basically ruined that relationship. Even though yes, Roman Reigns was abusive, but it wasn't that big of a problem in the past. Jay still found a way to be the next tribal chief and Jimmy's jealousy just got the best of him. At least I think I'm right, I could be totally wrong, but it does seem like Roman Reigns had no idea. So when you go back to that segment where Roman Reigns said that Jimmy Uso never wanted Jay to be the next tribal chief, Jimmy all of a sudden turning on Roman Reigns, Jay almost became the next tribal chief and that's when Jimmy turned on Jay. I I think that's the story. I think Roman Reigns was not lying and when you think about it, it's not that bad, right? The storyline is not that bad, it was really really subtle. I think it fooled all of us because I remember watching that segment and it seemed obvious that Roman Reigns is just using manipulation as always, he's lying to Jey Uso. He's trying to separate these brothers. Barely anyone picked up on this and once we got this betrayal, people even forgot that we got this segment. And I'm actually very excited about this future match. First of all, it's brother versus brother, twin versus twin, two great wrestlers. The potential right here is absolutely unbelievable and people for whatever reason are sleeping on it. Just try to imagine what kind of matches we're going to get and I'm not even talking about the spots or anything like that. I'm talking about the storytelling in the ring. I feel like the story they're going to tell is Jay not wanting to fight Jimmy. I feel like he's too hurt and is his brother. I feel like he's more sympathetic. Maybe it's not gonna go as far as Rey Mysterio versus Dominic, but something along those lines. I'm calling it right now, it's gonna be a great storyline and people will say, well, we were wrong. But people also don't seem to realize that this is the Usos dream match. Jimmy and Jay kept saying that one day they do wanna face each other. Jimmy versus Jay. Hey, hey, Funny hey, thing hey, is hey. we haven't pitched it yet, but we're over constantly saying it to each other. Really? Constantly that, that, pitching. That, that, before our career is done, man, like that that's me and his go-to. That's my number one, you know, uh, dream of happening. Me versus him at a WrestleMania. Wow. Why? You know, Why does that mean so much? Because it's like back in the living room, Moose. You know, like from day one again, man. Like yeah. this, this is what we always wanted to do. You know, I want my dad to be in there, be involved, like uh, a referee. Like I just want my whole family to run this thing, you know. And just me being against my brother, like... I, my heart be filled with joy, man. This is really wholesome. I'm really happy for these two. Maybe it should have felt a little bit bigger because it's the Usos, possibly the greatest tag team of all time and this kind of came out of nowhere. But you can also make an argument that this is exactly how it should have been done. Not a lot of people saw it coming. Even those who did, didn't really want to believe it. It seems like wrestling fans were hurt by this. The build to this betrayal was really, really subtle and whether it was good or bad, it kind of depends on the way you look at it. Paul Heyman talked about how this storyline is gonna keep on continuing, you know? The numbers don't lie and I get it, you know, at times 
I got bored of this storyline as well. But you gotta agree, man. It's a story that sometimes loses you and then it just picks up. Then you're excited again. I was guilty of this too. People keep complaining about how long this story is, how long this championship title reign is. But it's the most interesting thing in pro wrestling right now. It's the rivalry that gives WWE ratings, viewership, and hearing Paul Heyman talk about it, I get it, man. I honestly do. I get how you feel. It's the Usos. People don't want to see them breaking up. But at the same time, I'm glad you feel that way. Now look what I mean by that. Don't you like these kind of moments when you're actually pissed off at wrestling? In a good way, in this case, in my opinion. Where it kind of feels a bit more real. Where a heel move actually almost hurts your feelings. Well, isn't that the actual point? The way you felt during this night is the way people probably looked at wrestling back in the 90s or 80s. And what people also don't seem to realize, we're going to get Jay vs. Jimmy, possibly a great storyline, a bunch of great matches, twists and turns and all that crap. And you know what? They're gonna be back together. Yes. You didn't lose the Usos. One day you will see the Usos as a tag team again. It's that simple. I don't know why people are so pissed. If Jimmy want to go singles, man, I'll support him. You know, if I want to go, he'll support me. We can always come back together. You know, we'll it's also clear that Solo Sequoia is going to turn on Roman Reigns too. Every week, he's just more angry at Roman Reigns. And I've complained about WWE always having these interference in Roman's matches. But one of my viewers, I believe, in the comments made a great point. It seems like every month, the bloodline is falling apart. Just so at WrestleMania, once we get Cody vs. Roman Reigns part 2, there won't be any interferences because nobody will have Roman's back anymore. It's gonna be Reigns, Cody, one-on-one, -on -one, no BS. Maybe I'm giving WWE too much credit, but from what we've seen with the whole Bloodline storyline, I just feel like they never missed. So this whole idea that Jimmy just attacked Jay for no reason and it doesn't make any sense, I simply don't believe that. Especially when a guy like Paul Heyman is involved. So I was really surprised by the overreaction. Like I've said, I'm happy people feel that way. That's the whole point. WWE wanted you to talk, and you're talking. You're angry. And also accusing them of this attack being random without watching SmackDown where you're going to get a follow-up. What happened to that, by the way? We're just not gonna wait for SmackDown. I do have a feeling it's going to be a great story, and I hope I'm right. Thank you for watching this video, the great one. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure. Bye.